Hey everyone, it's John and today what we're going to do is begin a new video series on my channel and this is covering key concepts within the automation world. So I thought this video series would be a neat way to maybe unwrap and disentangle some of the complexities you hear about in all of these weird and wonderful automation terms. Because let's be honest, it is a little bit of a maze out there. So for the first concept in the series, what I thought I would discuss would be the concept of atomicity. Now this looks like an interesting word, what exactly does it mean? Well, let's dig into that. So let's examine an Ansible playbook and we'll see exactly what this means because what you're going to actually see here is that this concept of atomicity really is an issue when you're dealing with legacy devices. So if I do a vim acl cli. Okay, so I've got an Ansible playbook here and the goal here is just to simply push out these access control configurations to my device. So what I want to push out to my device are these configurations here. But here's the thing, this configuration is not one atomic transition. In fact, it can be broken down line by line. In fact, when Ansible pushes this configuration to the CLI, what's going to happen is it's going to push this line and then this line and then this line and then this line, so on till we get to the very end. Now on its face, you might think, what's the problem with this? Well, the answer is, if everything is configured correctly, then there's not really much wrong with this, but there is an issue if you do get something wrong, so let's demonstrate that. Okay, so let's push this configuration out. We'll say Ansible Playbook, and we'll say ACL CLI.yaml. Okay, so Ansible has pushed those commands to the device, and let's check this out then. So if we go here, and we do a show access list, we can see that these access rules have all been successfully pushed to the device. That's great. But here's the thing. What would happen if I made a typo in this configuration? Well, let's remove this access control list and then try again with a mistake in it. So I'll say no IP access list extended CLI firewall. And let's check this. Okay, great. This firewall has now been removed. Let's try to push this configuration again, but with a tiny error in the config. Okay, so let's go back into this playbook then, aclcli.yaml. Now this might appear like an obvious mistake, but let's imagine we were dealing with thousands of devices and this little error just threw us off. Let's just say you happen to put, I don't know, maybe an extra P in here, okay? So this last line now has a small syntax error. Let's try and push it and see what happens. Okay, so remember we have no access control list configured on the device. We've just removed the previous one. Let's try and push this now. And Ansible tells us we've got an error. Okay, so what is this error? Now, here's the problem here, okay? See if I go to my device and I arrow up. Look what's happened. The playbook didn't actually fail. It only partially failed. It failed on the very, very last line. So now we're in this no man's land, this very dangerous area where we've basically got an inconsistent configuration. So in essence, this firewall is going to deny this, deny this, deny, 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 and it's got no permits, and it's going to have an implicit deny at the end, therefore this access list is going to now block absolutely everything in the network. And the reason why this could happen is because my access control list could be atomized, it could be broken down line by line and applied linearly. Now in my very small network of one device, this is not going to have much consequence at all, but you can imagine you could black out the network quite easily and not actually know you've done it straight away. So here's the advantage of using something like say restconf or netconf. Let's revisit the same problem, okay? So let's just remove this access list again. Okay, now we're back to square one, no access list on the device. So here's the thing, if I happen to push this via restconf or netconf, this would not be an issue, let me show you. So let's check the next play, but we'll say acl restconf.yaml. So what I'm going to do here is push this restconf configuration and access list configuration, and I'm going to push it using the native Yang model. So where are the configurations? Well, it lies within my host variable files. Let's go and look at that. So I'll go into my host files and go into R1. So now my configuration, my access list is stored programmatically in these host variable files, which would be version controlled. Now here's the thing, when I go to push this configuration, this cannot be atomized. This will be one whole transaction, one whole atomic operation. That means that if I happen to make a slight error in any of the lines, the whole configuration will be rejected. This way, we're either going to push the configuration or not push it. We're not going to get any of that halfway partial config, which can be really, really dangerous to the network. So let's scroll down and try to make the same mistake. We'll misspell IP, okay? Very small error, but here's the thing, when we go to push this configuration, we're not going to halfway push it, we're just going to get a full out rejection because there's an error. 
So let's try to push this one then. We'll say Ansible Playbook ACL Resconf. And it tells us straight away we've got an error. And if we go to the device, and you'll notice that none of the configuration at all was pushed to the device because in essence, we were pushing one whole transaction. And because that whole transaction, that one block of configuration had an error in it, then it was not accepted. So we've not inadvertently blocked out all of our traffic. So instead, if we go and fix that error now, and we just correctly spell IP, let's rerun the playbook. And it says, okay, let's go and open up our terminal. And now we can see that our access list has been correctly applied as we specified. And we don't need to worry about getting caught in no man's land. And this is one of the benefits of automating with modern devices. So hopefully this was at least a little bit helpful in helping you understand the concept of atomicity in the context of network automation. And if you want to see more of this content in a lot more detail, then check out my training on CBT Nuggets. So that's the first one of the series in the bag. Hopefully it was helpful and just keep labbing, keep practicing. Thanks very much and I'll see you soon.